What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today I've got this absolutely stunning knife to take a look at, do an overview on, uh, talk about, have a cup of coffee with me. Let's, uh, let's take this one in together because there's a lot going on here. Uh, this is the Shirgoroff Quantum Bronze, uh, I believe from 2022 is when they uh, started doing these custom division knives. And uh, one of, if not the coolest uh, custom division knife, uh, one of them, that they do. So we're going to talk about this knife today. Um, sit back, relax, enjoy it. Um, this knife is not super, super common. In fact, uh, I had to pry it from somebody's hand just to get a shot at taking a look at one. So, pretty excited to show you this knife. And more than anything, just as a sheer grow off enthusiast, I am really excited to take a look at this one. As a reminder, uh, visit my website, bladezilla.ca. Got my phone right there, where I have a lot of sheer grow offs, CKFs, uh, Chavez, all kinds of stuff online, ready to go in Canada, ready to ship, bladezilla.ca. I, uh, I always have to say that because people ask uh, constantly what the website is. But uh, now that we know, that's it, bladezilla.ca. Add me on Instagram as well. I post a lot of this kind of silly stuff and flipping videos and whatever. Um, and it's a great place to just interact, send a DM and get a conversation started. So it's also somewhere I really appreciate. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about this absolute work of craftsmanship and art in the form of this, uh, of this knife. So let's get going. Let's, let's start. Where to begin? Well, I'm going to start off with this. We're going to get measurements because everyone wants to know. Always, always, always. What's the size? For the most part, it's about you know, every other quantum. So overall length, we're coming in at eight and three quarters. Eh, maybe a little more depending on the tape measure. Uh, blade should be four inch to the sharpened edge with a mirrored mirrored shine to it and a handle from the tip to the end of four and three quarters. So there you go. Nice solid size. We are also going to do the weight because it is a full carbon knife, which uh, is pretty cool because it's not very common to get a really light four inch knife. It doesn't feel like it's very, very light. But compared to some of the other ones, it's, uh, I'm assuming, it's got to be around 4 ounces. 4.2. 4.2. Which probably comes from this thick blade stock. I don't even see that or not, but very thick blade stock that's used in this. So there we go. We got a 4 inch knife, 4, in it, four ounces essentially. You know, remember my scale's not the best. Um, in the world, but uh, more than anything, just take 30 seconds with me and admire this freaking knife. So we've got kind of some smooth-ish finish to the carbon, so it looks like it's very textured up here, but it's actually quite smooth. It's not gloss, it's more of a matte finish to it, which makes it a little grippy. And then inside here, it's all textured out. So it's very grippy inside, which is going to be great for your fingers to get a hold of. We still have this quantum, I don't know what you'd call this. To me, it looks like a boat oar kind of uh, pattern inside the carbon fiber. It's a, it's a nice uh, wide specked and spaced carbon that just shimmers when you move this around under the light. Beautiful. Looks like an old composite kind of look to it. And then on the back, as uh, as they say in the uh, the porn business, this is where the magic happens. So full carbon fiber lock side, which is rare. And then they integrate in the titanium lock bar into the carbon. And I just want to reiterate this: how uncommon this is. Even for Shira Gorov, you know, what they typically do is they'll do a carbon front show scale. And even on like uh, the Hattie, um, even the custom divisions, it's, it's typically, I'll show you one here. Uh, let's grab my blue one. So there's your Hattie. And it's usually carbon scale. And then on the back, 
it's, you know, titanium on the lock bar. How on earth this knife was able to integrate a lock bar scale, that's titanium, a lock bar into the scale, that's carbon, is just incredible. That to me is the mastery of this knife that uh, it's going to take a while for me to figure out. And I'm not going to open this one up. Um, a guy in Vancouver, uh, Fabry, he, uh, I believe he has a video on how to take this one apart, do your general maintenance on it, and make it feel silky smooth and fresh. And um, I recall seeing a video uh, on the inside of this. It must have been him. And uh, let me tell you, gorgeous inside. And, uh, oh, it's... A piece of art. So anyway, that's what we're going to talk about today. And obviously, not to mention, look at this beautiful blade with that laser etching inside and above the CD logo. That is not a, that is not your eye playing tricks on you. That is a, uh, I think it's called Vanadis 10 blade with some laser etching inside. Ooh, super, super cool. It gives me like F3 vibes. So, Ooh, okay. I need to, I need to take a chill pill. Okay. So let's do some quick comparison. Let's pull out my usual suspects, the Stellar. Uh, we've seen this in a lot of videos just for size comparison. We will grab my Neon NL custom division, which I still have yet to do a video on, which, uh, let's be honest, I'm sure I will at some point. So there's your three sizes your Quantum, your Stellar, and your Neon. And if we are looking at changing the angles, I'm going to start doing this, I think, by putting the knife comparison in the middle and then kind of changing things up to show it the other direction as well. Just because the camera seems to play a little bit of tricks on us. See how big the Stellar all of a sudden looks compared to the Neon? So there's that. Um, I will grab my F95 Tortoise. There it is, Turtle just to show the uh, the scale here as well because these are very similar size wise almost identical actually size wise but there are some distinct differences between the two and you can kind of see the, the the shape to the handle kind of the dual roll to the the quantum whereas the f95 tends to be a more rolled kind of palming feel to it which is uh, why a lot of people really like that one it makes you feel kind of like you're holding a uh, like a pistol it really sits well in your hand in your palm especially but a lot of features that are similar amongst these two surprisingly and we're going to go over that so let's put that guy away and in terms of other fancy high-end comparables i guess i can show you my f95 Silk, another knife I have yet to do a video on, but an older school kind of, uh, an older school custom division knife uh, from I think 2018, something like that. And then even prior to that, an old F95 custom division, NL uh, F95 without a backspacer, which is kind of rare. And I have done a video on this one. So if you are interested in checking this one out, um, I bought this one kind of fell in my lap uh, from a fella in Canada and uh, now it's just sitting in the case so a really cool piece of history there and then the silk slim um, I don't know what else I can say about these these are very hard to find and extremely beautiful and smooth like they feel silky smooth but an old-school um, custom division knife and and I guess the main thing to think about here when you see a custom division knife from Shergroff is like they gradually and slowly make improvements in the technology and they kind of trickle down from the top from their like full customs and then slowly end up in their custom divisions and then lo and behold you know in the production knives and the production knives are some of the best on the market at their price point respectively but uh, custom division knives are just Oh, are you kidding me? So a four ounce knife that feels this solid is just crazy. Like in hand, it feels rock solid. Like it's just, and, and a thick blade stock to boot. Oh my God. Okay. 
let's start. In hand. Terrific feel. It's uh, a bigger knife, right? Um, fits my hand great. No hot spots. I love the jimping on that blade as well. It fits real, real, real nice. But as you can kind of see, it sweeps down in front of it to do a nice Persian style blade. And I see a lot of like fighter jet vibes here. Like that's the cockpit and you've got a nice bevel to the top. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous blade. And we're not even getting into the, the laser etching inside. Like, isn't that just crazy? And up close, it's just beautiful. I've taken some photos of this on uh, on Instagram with my um, with my macro lens and, and punched in on it. And it's just uh, so beautifully done. And it's another one of those details you just love to look at, appreciate, admire. Um, the blade itself is that Vanitas 10. I actually don't know very much about it other than it's typically a, a very seldom used blade. I put it in the same kind of category as like Vanex for how often it pops up. But some people really like it and uh, I don't know much about it. I'm actually going to, so I should have done it beforehand, but I will research that and maybe include uh, a little bit of description in the uh, of the video, just so just to kind of compare it to like, you know, the common ones, like M390, you know, how does it, how does it differ from like an M390? That'd be probably good to know, or an S90V. Um, pretty cool. On the blade edge itself, we can see a nice mirror shine to it. And depending on the steel, on its characteristics, that can be either very easy to do or extremely difficult to do. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of look that up beforehand, which I didn't do, obviously. And because I'm lazy, but it has nothing to do with that. Gorgeous. This particular one, chip free. I don't even know if this has ever been used for anything. It's a uh, complete mirror to it, which is rare for being a couple years old. Um, the handle itself, so we called it bronze, right? The quantum bronze, and that stems from this uh, 3D mill backspacer, which looks great. Nice thick backspacer, but there's also, I don't know if they're actual pieces of bronze or copper or whatever, but there are specks found within the handle that, uh, you know, some gold accents or bronze, as well as the, uh, the pivot hardware is all color matched beautifully well. And here's one differentiator is like typically with Shiro's, even with their custom divisions, they typically match the backspacer, the, uh, the, the pivot, as well as the clip. And they haven't done that here on the clip. And I'm kind of curious why. And looking at it, I understand, obviously. But uh, because of the whole, you know, integrating a titanium lock bar onto a carbon fiber or carbo tie or whatever it's called. It's just done so well, like, the seam is, is flawless, it's non-existent. I think the greatest thing that you'd probably notice on this knife is in, internally, and, and unfortunately I'm not going to open this up, this is not, uh, this is not one I want to play with. You can see inside the back spacer there, and maybe I'll flip it to see it better. Switch hands, try not to cut myself, now my palm's facing the knife. You can see inside there we've got a Shirogorov logo. Let's just focus this. There we go. Shirogorov logo under the backspacer and a pin. And then we have the custom division marking on, uh, what does it say, number 26, I think? CD 2022, uh, 26. So CD 20. Might be year 2020 and then 02 February number 26. That would make sense to me. Otherwise, it just uh, it's just another one of those details. You look inside the backspacer, you see a Shearroff logo, you see you know a date stamp and a serial number in a place that you really wouldn't expect to see it. And that to me is what's so cool. Um, obviously, the inside of this is all micro-milled, skeletonized to bring that weight down. The clip is attached uh, internally with a screw, which is done very, very well. And then the titanium, the way they do this lock bar, like, it really reminds me a lot of, like, the Stellaris 
in kind of how they do their inset liner lock. And I, I don't, I, I, funny enough, I have a Stellaris um, in the inventory, but I, it's not beside me while I'm filming this. Um, the way they bond that titanium in is just so cool. I would love to see, like, they must attach the clip and the, the liner. They must do that in the same spot, unless it's bonded or something. I think the big tell would be opening one of these up because it's just beautiful. Looking inside, I'm just trying to see one more time. Yeah, the, the this is another rarity. They don't do this. So even the carbon fiber scale, it's all skeletonized and milled out internally as well. And I'll try to show a light uh, on the inside from the bottom up just to show that. But this may be one of the first Shiro's that I've seen do this. See the pocket there? This The bottom scale is the uh, carbon. Well, I guess the, the front show scale. That's all milled out too. Wow. And then on the back side, I just want to take a look at more things. Sorry, I'm nerding out a little bit. And then on, so yeah, the show scales all, um, both big deep pockets from here, as well as on the back side. And then on the liner side or the, the lock side, the back part of it is all machined out. And then there's another pocket up top here that is also milled out on the carbon. And then the titanium, like it's all milled. That's almost an expectation now, but it is all beautifully worked as well. Gorgeous, man. Oh, sign me up, sign me up for another one. Um, we have a over travel stop built in here as well, as well as a lock bar insert. And the more I look at this, it's just, everything's rounded beautifully. Like it's, it's the milling that we're looking at here that is just next level. And you're seeing kind of like all these almost like trapezoidal little spots of rounding and shaping and forming and custom handmade edges and work. It's just beautifully done, beautifully done. And I don't know if I'm crazy, but am I seeing a little bit of bronze that's popping through on some of that anodizing? Is that almost like the jeans vibe? Or am I, maybe I'm not seeing that and maybe the light's just reflecting on it weird. I could be wrong. So someone had asked as well on how, even on the jeans, um, so what they, what they did was they did like a blue anno and then around the edges they kind of made it a little brassy or a little bronzy. And someone asked how they do that. And it's typically, I think it's a dual step anodization where you anodize one color and then you rough up the edges and then you anodize it to a, a different temperature. And uh, pretty cool. Anyway, I don't think they're doing that here unless I'm, I'm kind of in a weird light right now. It's a very daylight, but I'm looking up here and it, Maybe they do have some up here. I don't know. Um, that that over travel stop is obviously very effective. The knife itself is tuned brilliantly by the use of roller bearings, uh, single row roller bearings, which is just incredible action. Incredible. This has to be one of the smoothest feeling custom division knives I think I've felt. It's just silky smooth, like. Um, Oh, controlled, easy drop, uh, yet really solid. Beautiful detent, nice and crisp. Um, some people have reverse flicked this. I've seen that. Uh, I've seen people thumb flick these on here. I wouldn't do that personally because I think you would just end up messing up with the uh, laser etching. But I've seen people reverse flick them, which is cool. If you're into that sort of thing. I'm not at all. But um, the other thing with that lock bar insert I always mention as well is that I don't know the material of it. I don't know, um, you know, typically you're, you're putting a steel between two different metals. So titanium on the lock bar and in this case van it is 10 or M390, S90V, uh, S110, S125, whatever. Um, by putting a different material in there, you can really tune the control and, the, and how you want those two materials to interact with one another. And uh, I would love to know what Shiro uses, kind of as their AAA, or in this case, when you have a kind of a steel that's not as common, you know, what, what's their go-to for that? 
that'd be a fun conversation just to kind of nerd out a little bit. And then uh, as well, it is an, uh, attached internally. So on some of the other custom divisions, they have a screw here that goes and attaches that lock bar insert from the, uh, the lock bar itself. And I'll show that, F, that silk to kind of show what I'm talking about. Perfect example. You know, we've got the screw on the outside and you can see the little tab for the lock bar over travel stop. Pretty cool. And then on the latest version, the Turtle, which is newer than this knife, they made the switch there as well and attached it internally. So the screws on the inside. It's just a nice little thing to see. You know, it's, it's not as much of an eyesore. Not at all. The lock bar, uh, the bend in the lock bar is external as well versus, I will grab my silk slim and show you that that one was internal. See the bend in there? See what's on the inside of the frame? Whereas a lot of the new ones now, they're on the outside. And I find the ones on the outside just kind of, I don't know if it's any different, let's be honest. I just find they, uh, they tend to be a little smoother. But some people think it's an eyesore. I personally think that they do this with, uh, in conjunction with the clip, because then you get a nice space for your jeans or your dress pants or whatever, um, board shorts. You have somewhere for material to flow into. And then as they travel up, you've got a nice, you know, not much sticking out of your pocket on this, which is totally acceptable. And in a lot of cases, like even better than acceptable. You can see all the way around the carbon on the perimeter of the frame now. Lots of beveling. Lots, lots of edge work on the carbon. Smooth, rounded. I'm just going to put this away so I don't cut myself. You know, smooth and rounded. That same, quote, paddle design that I found on this front scale. I don't know what they call that. It just, uh, just kind of looks like that to me. It's also found on the back here. Also textured and grippy which is kind of where you're you're holding the knife right when it's in hand like your your fingers find that spot so that's beautiful nice and grippy yet smooth like very rare combination uh the knife is it balanced oh it's perfectly balanced over my finger wow i was expecting it to be a little front heavy because of how thick that blade is and I don't know, I think it's four mil, which is thicker than a production Shiro. Um, and I believe the dimensions of this, um, if you recall my uh, Quantum SR, it feels identical uh, dimensionally. Because big, thick backspacer, just beautifully done. Beautifully done. But that lock bar and how they attach it, because I, I can tell there's titanium on the inside, even up, up top here. So it's got to be bonded in there somehow. We'd love to see what this looks like internally. Feels solid, feels crisp. Just beautiful. It has their captive pivot system as well under the, this uh, Showside hardware, which is kind of a, in a lot of ways a bit of a decoy um, in that you're actually going to be adjusting it from this side. Um, captive pivot system is a cap on top of a ball bearing that's kind of sunk in. Think of it as like a ball sitting in a detent hole so that the this doesn't rotate around. Whereas uh, it's on, on the other couple shear gore offs, it's just kind of a pivot that will spin around free spinning. Whereas if you can kind of lock that in place, uh, it, first of all, the, uh, the angles you can tune on that and make it look beautiful and symmetrical. But now you're only dealing with one hardware side. And speaking of hardware, this is their uh, fancy, you know, there's their proprietary, air quotes, uh, bit. You know, you can get away with a screwdriver in a pinch. Please, for the love of you know, God, don't use a screwdriver on a custom division. Get the tool. Uh, the tool itself is as beautiful <clears throat> and matching for their custom division, which is gorgeous. Has all the bits inside, including the reverse bits, and uh, even that, they're all numbered. So on the top, you can kind of see here, you know, they're just works of art itself. Beautiful tools. It has that little custom division logo, which includes the reverse bit. And I don't know if this knife actually has any reverse bits on it, so you could kind of get away with the other one, but I will show you on, uh, let's grab a, this guy here, an RJ, and show you a reverse bit. There's one right here. 
So there's a reverse bit. So think of it as just uh, the opposite of a normal bit. Also a super snappy MF -er of a knife. Oh, God, I love that one. A little chonky, but I love that knife. But to me, the magic is, if we're looking at the head of this, the front part here up, this is, a, this is the money shot on this knife. You get all the milling inside the design. You get that titanium lock bar adjacent to a, a carbon fiber show, or a scale. And then you get the laser etching inside the blade. Like, to me, isn't that just a nuts photograph opportunity? All that right there, all right next to each other. That's incredible. Like, get out of town. And, and the, uh, I don't know, I keep calling it the paddle design, it's not. But you see that design transfer in onto the lock bar. You see how they've milled that out? They don't have to do that. That's beautiful work. My gosh. Just nuts. And you see, you can actually kind of get a peek of it right in here. You can see that inside titanium is kind of just bonded a little bit inside the carbon fiber on the, on the liner, but it's out of out of sight a little bit. And I'm trying to figure out where it starts and stops. You can just see the uh, reflection just kind of starting there. Just above my right thumb and in front of the backspacer. You can see there's, there's definitely something going on. And the magic that this knife would have oh, on the inside would be another work of art. Now, I, I guess, so. I suppose, okay, as I've talked, you know, good, you know, good jimping, you can choke up, nice flat to the top. The blade itself, you know, is, is nice and rounded until it goes forward. And, you know, very, very typical Shirogorov kind of profile that you see in today's day and age. You know, just mastery in metal materials. Um, you know, I talked about that talked about the jimping's beautiful no none whatsoever you know hot spots i've got a good amount of room for my fingers you know if i had a sixth finger i could still easily hold on to this guy no problem you know the hump on the jimping's beautiful i'm a little surprised they didn't match the uh the backspacer kind of profile to the blade and they've been doing that on a lot of the custom division knives. Case in point would probably be the F95 that I have here. In that you can kind of see the, the spacing on the jimping and the backspacer. They match. Same with on the new Hattie. Um, they match. So I'm kind of surprised that they didn't match that on this. Which is not a big deal at all. But uh, just one more detail. Maybe that's just a newer thing they're doing. And this is, remember, this is a few years old now. You know, I'd really like to see the Sheer Groff logo somewhere bonded into the carbon, kind of like the Stellar, or sorry, the Stellaris. I'd like to see that. Um, because anytime you put you know, custom division on the blade, you're kind of asking for it to get kind of worn off. If, if you're going to use the knife, which if it's custom division, I don't know how many people are using them, but there are a few. So that's one thing that'll go. Same with the Vanitas 10, that'll eventually wear off. So it'd be kind of cool, you know, put put the uh, stamp inside here. That's what I would suggest for the material. But remember, these are these are show pieces. These are these are your Rolex pieces, where they're as much to tell you what they are as uh, as they are to be used. So pretty cool. Um, on the inside, we have the roller bearing, I believe. Which side was it on? I think I see it right inside here. The little roller bearing icon instead of being single row or multi row. It just looks like a little sunlight. There it is. Cool. So they were able to put that on there and then the numbering underneath the back spacer, which is just next level, which I talked about as well. But to me, everything's just so smooth, rounded. Like you can't even feel the seams on the knife. But you can see them, you just don't feel them. Just absolute gorgeous. 
And, and we're not even talking about the blade, we're not even talking about that <laughs> insane laser etching inside the, uh, inside the blade there. Oh, get out of here. Just a beautiful, all the chamfering, oh, it's just done so well, honest to God. You see like lines, lines pop up on this. You don't even recognize as you're playing with it and holding it. You just look and go, oh, there's another line. <laughs> nuts. Absolutely nuts. But, you know, for, for the most part, and I'll grab uh, another quantum here. Just like, I, I wish I had a, like a, a Thai quantum. Um, I don't have any high-end quantums this second beside me. Uh, but I will show you the... The next best thing just to kind of show you the like a production version to show you just the general you know what they'll do remember these are their entry level pieces but it gets the point across where is a blue one there we go there's a couple production quantums so you're kind of seeing like just the overall profile right of what's your goal of trying to accomplish here you know big persian deep swoopy blade you can kind of see some some lines that are similar the uh you know look at where the swooping of the blade and how it kind of edges down right you're seeing those lines they're all very similar the actual lines on the handle and material all very similar right like i just love how you can get for i guess on this one maybe a quarter of the price or a fifth of the price you can get Something very similar. And then on the flipper tab, this is another little detail that uh, it's just to die for. What do you see on that flipper tab that's very similar to the blade? What are you guys seeing in there? Some more laser etching inside the flipper tab, which isn't flush. It's completely milled out. Just another detail that's just incredible. And then not only that, you know, they've, they've once again put it completely in line with the handle. Nice and smooth. And to give perspective on that, let's grab my turtle again. F95. These are the kind of two profiles that you get with the Shiro's. Do you want it in line where you can flick it out? Or do you want your finger to find a little gap and a little hole that, uh, you know, pulls it back a little bit? The main thing that I always say is look at and pay attention to the relation of the flipper tab to the pivot. Because if the flipper tab is in front, it's going to be a very firm launch. And you can see that, right? This is almost a little bit in front of it. If that flipper tab is behind the pivot, like on a Dr. Death, then it's a very soft launch. And you have to think about it as the bicycle cog on your wheel, right? As the gears get harder or easier. So when I launch this one out, it's softer. And everyone complains about the Dr. Deaths. Oh, they're a little, little soft. The detent's soft. And it's like, no, the detent's not soft. It's just you're adding all that leverage to it. And you've got to just give it a little more gas when you launch it out. Whereas on these Quantums and F95s, even the F95s, it's still pretty similar to the quantum it's still pretty firm right just something to pay attention to leverage it's a beautiful thing one thing I do notice though is they flipped around the hardware and that's pretty common as all in the custom divisions don't be alarmed that uh, sometimes they look blank on the front on the show scale they usually flip them around so your heads on the back so they're both sides are matching it's honestly a nice detail and something I wouldn't worry about. I don't actually know if you can flip them. Um, maybe someone can chime in in the comments if you can flip them, but uh, I definitely prefer it to be just nice and flush. What I'm surprised about is why they keep that screw that color and they don't make it black to match or put a carbon fiber cap on it or something to make it flush. But that's another conversation. Uh, you can run a lanyard as well if you want to. And it's beautifully built into the backspacer. If you want to go that route, that's not a problem. And I always show the Stellar, right? So 
Uh, on these guys, you can see right through it. A little bit of an eyesore to some. Other people don't really care, but it's it's a conversation piece. Whereas on the Quantums, they build it right into the backspacer so that from the side, there's nothing seeing through it. it. Looks clean, nice, clean, clear under control, but still very practical when in fact, if you do want to run, you know, a bead or whatever. Perfectly centered, tight tolerances, just an absolute filthy, well done knife. That's so much lighter than you'd think. Got some good feel to it, good grippy kind of vibe to it with that internal texturization inside the quote Bodor or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, the pattern is duplicated throughout the titanium materials as well as on the carbon. The pocket clip angles itself so that it's putting all the pressure onto the um, onto the frame versus the lock bar, which I always say, make, make sure you're holding it on top of that with your fingers like this. When you're launching it, you're not going to have any issues because my fingers are pushing on the clip, which is then pushing that weight onto this versus onto the lock bar. And if I do the same thing, say I hold it, my finger on the lock bar, you know, it's not, it's not going to launch. And that's, that's what these are known for. Don't, don't fool yourself. That is a drawback. But, as long as you understand to hold them normally, and you just get used to your fingers being on the clip, it's a zero problem. You know, like some people really struggle with that for the first five flips. And then, and then a light bulb goes off and they go, oh, I just hold it like this, and now I do that all the time, and it's a zero issue. Small price to pay for the, probably the best action in any knife that I have right now. Is that lock bar elevated too? I think it is, yeah. Ah, uh, is it? Yeah, ever so slightly. So if we look back on the lock bar, see when I roll the knife, see how it pops up a little bit on this side, the silver shiny side? See how it's kind of sticking up? So your finger finds that bevel real nice and easily. And as well, they've even uh, matched it on the carbon fiber with a little milling as well. It's just nice and smooth. So that's a nice detail. Love it. And any time you add milling to the, the inside of the lock bar on the other side, it just makes it feel so wide and easy to access. So they know what they're doing. Even on the top on the flipper tab, there's some milling up behind it. So when you launch it, it's just nice and... I'm trying to open it gently. Nice and smooth. So your finger falls into the, an area that's nice and smooth. Now, negatives if there are any. I could see there being a point of contention. I'm just looking now. The blade is really close up top here. Um, it's very close. I don't know if you'd cut yourself, but I'm sure if you tried to cut yourself, you probably could down here, because I can feel the, the choil edge, which is probably the dullest point of it, but still. Uh, on the back here, no, your finger's not getting in there at all. In fact, if they wanted to mill off the tips of the carbon here and make it look even more sleek, uh, they could, but I wouldn't go that route. You want it to look like a quantum. So that's, I guess, up here one point of contention, which is why don't they bring that backspacer and fill it up? Eh, maybe one day. I don't have a problem with it. You know, they certainly could do it. But that'd be that would look kind of strange, don't you think? This came all the way up. Um, on some of the quantums, there's always been a gap right here in front of the backspacer, and that still remains here. It's probably just needed for, you know, manufacturing or something, which I don't have a problem with. Looks good. Something about black and gold colorways. It's always worked well for me, and I always love it. It just works so well. Nice thick blade stock, just love it. But for me, the MVP is the lock bar scale. This is the, the best part of the knife where you get carbon, titanium, the beautiful, beautiful blade and flipper tab, both with that level of detail that you don't see anywhere else. And that's that's the beauty of the quantum bronze with, okay, there's some gold or bronze, copper, whatever you want to call it, inlaid into the carbon, great. I think it looks great and, and it's subtle enough that when the light hits it, it, sh it pops out and looks gorgeous. 
but I don't think that's why you buy this knife. There's a lot of other knives that have little flecks of uh, whatever in it. You buy it for this lock bar. Very much like uh, the Hattie Magnetic, you're buying it for that lock bar and how beautiful it is and how much precision work that has gone into it. That's why you're buying that knife. And for this, you're buying it because of this. And how unrealistic it is to take carbon and titanium, make them work so perfectly well together in unison, and have the knife feel so solid, so firm, and finished to a level of detail with the roller bearing system, the captive pivot system, etc., that you just don't see in any of the other knives. Beautiful. Oh, the action. Oh, get out of here. Like, I feel like a complete nerd when I when I get a knife like this through because it's just so good. Oh, like, this knife is, okay, why do I buy a custom division compared to a production? And it's like, here's this knife, you hand it to them and they flip it and they go, oh, so where can I get one? And what do I have to sell to do it? It's that good. Oh, okay, well, I think I'm done nerding. I've probably talked for over half an hour. Um, that to me is a pretty cool knife. Love it. Love the Quantums. Love F95s. It's just they're bigger. They feel more substantial in hand. The texturing, the smoothness, it's just such a great combination. And uh, I could nerd out on this all day. All day long. But I won't. Because my camera has a battery on it. And I think most of you watch about six minutes of the video and uh, that's about it. So, uh, don't really feel there's going to be a whole lot of value for me to continue to talk. Okay? Well, that, my friends, is the Shirgorov Quantum Bronze Custom Division Knife. Uh, one of 50 worldwide. Number 26, I think I said earlier. Beautiful example, like new in box currently, and um, just a stunning piece of Shirgorov history over the last few years in the direction that they're going with all the cool, uh, cool little details that they've really become known for. And if you can find one, they are absolutely worth it. This one is going up on my site. I don't know when the video is going to follow, but uh, I put this one up on the site already. And uh, it can be yours. So take a look and do your research. They're expensive uh, at the time of filming this. Um, fall of 2023. Uh, pretty normal street value. Four to four and a half thousand US. And if they're like new in box, you know, and depending on the market, even more. Pretty standard. Because no one's selling them. Right? No one's, uh, they're hard to get. So, all right, guys, we'll appreciate you stopping by, and uh, until next time, we will catch you later. Peace.